to our series on marriage. What are the keys to a strong marriage? How do you show support to your spouse when hobbies and interests might not be exactly the same? Well, David and Tracy Sellers of Vows to Keep.com Marriage Ministries returns to complete their discussion about becoming a champion for your spouse's causes. We actually create a, a competition for control, and it comes usually in the form of demands. Um, you have to. I, this Saturday, we're doing this, and it, it, it could look so different. Biblically, we should be really having a competition to outgive each other, mm -hmm. which is a really fun way to live. Your spouse, of course, when you reject them in this way, um, tends to look for other people that have the same interest as they do. So what we mm -hmm. see in marriages that suffer from this condition is that usually you've got someone, you've got a couple that starts out as one, and over time they become two people living in two different worlds. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's a hard, hard place to be. If I put this in just very practical terms, for Tracy and I, she likes to go shopping. This means for me that I'm going to get engaged with her. I am as involved as I can be in that process. We have a lot of fun together. It's taken some time for me to get used to that, to really um, <laughs> engage probably in the most productive way, but yet we have a lot of fun. Um, for Tracy, she comes to car shows with me and, you know, she asks questions about why I like a certain kind of car or what, what about this or, you know, we have these dialogues and people see our relationship looking very different. They see us holding hands in environments and being excited about each other in environments that's not natural for them and they ask these questions, you know, why? And it gives us an opportunity to shine light in a place by answering those kind of questions. It's, it's not of me, it's of my desire to pursue God. I see you also really investing each other by doing that. You know, Tracy, mm -hmm. by asking those questions about those cars, you're you're investing in an mm -hmm. interest of yours, and you're yep. you're further connecting Definitely. with each other. I mean, it may feel like a small thing; it's a car show, a car show. But you know what? That's those are elements that mm -hmm. can bring you guys even closer, closer together. Now, let's say that it's been years since you've taken interest in in something, and all of a sudden you're just really passionate about it, and your spouse is going, "What has happened?" to this person in my home. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't understand, we've seen such a change. Mm -hmm. Well, I think being your spouse's champion becomes such a change for, you know, in those situations where, you know, they're saying, what, what has happened here? It, it becomes a, a significant antidote to a lifeless marriage. And that is the sort of thing that will really cause them to react. It might be, yeah, I've seen behavior in you, but also I think that there's a spark that's lit there that says, whoa, there's, there's actually a cause here. There's, there's an intentionality to it. We're no longer roommates, which is how a lot of marriages mm -hmm. get. Um, so it can be also an antidote to what a lot of couples suffer from in the area of just anger toward each other. There's these undercurrents that are always going. Um, when you take on someone else's cause, it, it is an attitude shift. And it's, it's something that becomes very, very visible. I think being your spouse's biggest champion, serving them, um, ultimately it, it's serving God also. And it will come back around to you. I, we have to be careful to not be motivated by how it comes back around to us. But I think it's also pretty easy to see that it does. Yeah, what we've talked about today is all about taking up someone else's cause. And it is so fulfilling in marriage when you take up God's cause yeah. together. And that's really the punchline of all that we're talking about. Because once you start taking up your spouse's cause, your eyes get off yourself and you say, what's this life really about? What's my marriage really about? And then it becomes a God-sized picture. We're really sinners by nature and it becomes kind of um, just so easy to say, I want what I want, so I need resources to get it. So we kind of claim everything as our own, all the time, all the money, all the resources, because I want this thing to happen. Well, if our cause is God's cause, then that's a total game changer. I want you to listen to this verse from 1 John chapter 5. It says, This is the confidence that we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So that means if we're on God's team, he's going to answer the prayers that say, Lord, I want to further your kingdom. He's going to provide those resources. I think a way to wrap this up today is whatever is his thing, make it yours. Whatever is her thing, make it yours. And of course, whatever is God's thing, make that be the point. What are your spouse's causes? How supportive are you? Let's not stop it. I don't want you to say, well, he or she's not supportive of me. No, that's, that's not go there. What can you right now 
reach out and be the hands and feet of Jesus with your spouse and your spouse's causes. And above all is God's causes, are God's causes, the key for your marriage. If not, and if you're in a position where you can't sit down with your spouse and talk about these things and take it to God, you can always talk to God about it. And God's prayers are powerful and can do amazing things. Thank you so much, Dave and Tracy, for joining us again this week on Faith and Friends. Very, very important information. Um, don't forget, you can go to VowsToKeep.com to find out more about the Vows to Keep Marriage Ministry, and you can hear more from Dave and Tracy Sellers on WTTP and Shine FM Radio right here in Lima and Bell Fountain and the surrounding areas.